My first guest, an acclaimed actress who has appeared in such uh, films as Dangerous Liaisons, Final Analysis, and Jennifer Eight. Uh, she's been getting great, great reviews for her latest film called Pulp Fiction, which opens today. This is her very first time on a talk show, so I'm thrilled to have her. Please welcome Uma Thurman, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I know you don't. You haven't done any of these, so it's nice to have you here. Huh? Thank you. I'm a bit nervous. Uh, well, that's Sorry. okay. That's you know, great. Now, you see, I always, I don't know why, I always thought of you as European, but you're actually from my neck of the wood. You're from... Amherst, Massachusetts. Oh, that's right. Okay. Well, you all seem to do these exotic films. You've done, what, 11 films in... A couple more, but 11's enough. Yeah, yeah, but you're only 24, right? Yeah. So when did you, when did you start? About 15, 16? Um, my first film was when I was 16. Now, what was, where, where was, did you do that... I did it in New York. It was like a kind of low-budget New York film yeah. noir that I did. It was supposed to be much older, but I'm 16, so yeah, yeah. they I mean, cast me. I mean, did you always know from like 11 or 12? Or I mean, at what point did you say, hey, this is something I would like to do? Well, it was always the only thing I could do. I mean, I was pretty useless at sports. It was the only <laughs> yeah. extracurricular thing that I could do with any, any kind of efficiency. And, and it became my thing, and it happened. I mean, did you do, like, the bad school play? All of them. Oh, yeah? All that kind I, I of was stuff. a ghost, and, uh, you know, I was uh, in the Wizard of Oz. I was the witch. I mean, I was just a complete ham from Oh, really? Now, did you get to the... Your little dog, too? I mean, all of that. You oh, yes. You know. Oh, that's very good. That's very good. <laughs> so, what made you... I mean, so you, you, you're, from, you're from Amherst, uh -huh. and what, you're, you went down to New York at, at 16? Yeah, pretty much. Um, when I was 15, actually, I went to a party with a friend of mine, and I didn't have enough bus fare to get from Rhode Island back to Massachusetts, so I called my mother and asked her if I could go to New York, because I had bus fare for New York. And, oh, and, uh, falls for that. <laughs> and she, she, she said, okay. It was better than staying at the bus station, I suppose. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and there I went. And then, you know, I started doing stuff, started taking acting lessons, and then I went back to boarding school, and some people came up, some agents came up and saw me playing Abigail in the Crucible. And they, they agreed to send me on auditions if I came back, so. Oh, okay. Well, that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Right. Now, you had another milestone recently, I heard. This is like a huge, huge breakthrough for you. A driver's license. Yes, you just got your driver's license? Capability, yes. Yes. Now, yeah. see, that's the difference, I think, between boys and girls. I was practicing backing up and down the driveway from age <laughs> nine until the day I got my license. I couldn't imagine not being 16 and just the first thing you do. Well, you... But I was living in New York. I mean, yeah, in New York, true. driving is taxi, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't, you don't need it. Um, in fact, though, I'm terrified to drive, though. I'm not very good at it. I've only, like, clogged in about 10 hours of road time, and really? I'm afraid that, that my driving would be a good advertising for Amtrak. Oh, really? <laughs> Somebody's got to speak up for Amtrak. <laughs> So you, so you just got your, did you pass your test the first time? No, no, actually, um, another Amtrak <laughs> official caught me on my first test in Oregon. I made a rolling, a rolling turn red on right. A rolling turn? You mean you flipped the car over? No. <laughs> no, I, I failed to make a complete stop. And I didn't bump this lady whatsoever, but there was this irate honking. No, she was about, you know, 75 years old or uh. something. And she was extremely, she felt her, her life was threatened. So they hear this honking, and I'm going, oh, no, oh, no. And um, I think we've made it to the parking lot, the DMV, and this little, like, Mazda, uh, just because I know you're, like, talking about the right, advertisers right, right. tonight. Right. No, this little car drives up next to me, and this little old lady gets out, and she starts pounding on the window furiously <laughs> and screaming, get out of the car, young lady, you nearly killed me. And I was so scared, and I was so distraught. It's years in the coming of this driver's license. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even roll the window down. I was afraid of her. So the driving uh, instructor said, I'll handle this, and he'd get out, and he talked to her. And uh, all I could hear her saying was, well, you better not pass her. You better not pass that young lady. <laughs> so he sort of sheepishly got back in and said, well, you know, I could have ignored the uh, crosswalk you just <laughs> dro drove over. I could have ignored the yellow light you entered the intersection on, but I can't ignore the little old lady. Yeah, so. yeah. Killing the elderly, they frown on. Yeah, she was unharmed. I see. But, but, but the fact that the fact that an elderly woman would chase you for miles yeah. should tell you, perhaps. Yeah, well, I suppose. <laughs> right, right, let's take a little break. We'll be right back right after this, ladies and gentlemen. Right back, right back. Welcome back, Tony 
along with Uma Thurman, one of the stars of uh, Pulp Fiction. This is uh, quite a film. I, I was very, very impressed. Uh, um, it sh it it's more like a novel, and it's not linear. It goes back and goes back and forward. And but you don't know, because as it's happening, it sort of unfolds yeah. and unfolds and unfolds. But it doesn't confuse you at all. It just makes all the time circular. You know, I had uh, Quentin Tarantino as all director and the writer of the film. And, and, and he had been on the show a couple of years ago, and nobody knew who he was. He'd done Reservoir Dogs. And he's sort of a manic guy, a strange guy. How does he convince you to do this movie? Did, were you reluctant? Did you, just, did you Were you familiar with it? Did you want to do it the minute you saw it? Or? No, I didn't. When I read the script, I didn't quite get if it was... If it, I didn't understand how funny it was going to be. And it was only through meeting uh, Quentin and his, you know, hyperactive kind of <laughs> yeah. uh, sense of humor that I, I realized that there was something really touched about him and about it. And uh, it took some convincing. But I, I'm really, like, bad that way. I just like to work with people that I feel good with. Yeah. You know. Is he, is he a comfortable director? I mean, is it, is it a fun... Is it a fun... It looked like it was fun to make because the dialogue was so... When I say so stupid, I mean that in a good way, and that, uh, that Travolta plays like this stupid hitman. Just this, you know, just this dopey guy, and his references are all like pop culture references from the 70s, which, which, I mean, I was laughing out loud throughout the movie, even though some of it was a little bit violent, I guess. Did it? Because I guess it would read strange, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, I mean, when you read it flat, and also you never know with directors, like, what they're going to do. I mean, you can read, you know, she picks up a glass of water, and it's with the wrong guy. It becomes like an act of perversity. But so, with Quentin, though, you know, his heart's in the right place, and, and he's just got this really macabre sense of humor. And also, he's, he's what makes it fun, too, is that he's my age. Right, you know, where right. He's a few years older than me, and it's really a contemporary director and and then his whole thing is really about us now and the things that affect us is he the youngest director you ever worked with yeah by yeah far. so i guess most of these older guys well back you know when i did uh, you know yeah, well what i think she'd be feeling is you know quentin's not like that just <laughs> like well no i mean it's really great we gotta do this and we gotta do that and don't you think and i mean he's much more like he's much more I think it. he is the only director that eats Captain Crunch, too. Does he actually eat Captain yeah, Crunch or just save eat... the boxes? No, he seems to enjoy the actual <laughs> cereal. So, well, let's take now. In this scene, you play. I, I, I can't describe it. You play. You play the wife of like this uh, gangster mall, a uh, gangster uh, drug dealer guy, right? Yeah. Well, in, in the scene that we're about to see, John Travolta, the former uh, thug that you just described, <laughs> right. um, is taking out the boss's wife to babysit her, right. basically, which is an extremely precarious thing to do. Let's take a look. Scene from Pulp Fiction. <laughs> it. Great soundtrack, too. The movie is, uh, is uh, Pulp Fiction. It opens today. Thanks for coming. I hope this wasn't too hard. This no. was easy to do, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, relax. We'll be right back right after this. Thanks for coming. <laughs>